Good evening. You're watching 6 p.m. Prime here on India Today. I'm Akshita Nath Gopal. And over the next one hour, we're focusing on all the big highlights, all the big takeaways from the Prime Minister's visit to America so far. The big headline-grabbing moment was, of course, his address at the U.S. Congress as well as his response to a media question uh, about minority rights, human rights being snatched in India and that entire narrative. We'll get to all the reactions coming in on that and also keep a focus on what you can expect over the next few hours, the final leg of the Prime Minister's America visit. First, as always, let's begin with the headlines. Mega opposition meet concludes in Patna. 15 political parties decide to fight against Modi together, but no consensus or post of convener. Round two of discussions in Shimla next in August. Up fumes at Congress over ordinance war, says it should decide whether it's with the BJP or against it. Kejriwal skips the joint opposition press briefing. Chief Oasis big attack on Nitish asks, where was Nitish in 2002 Gujarat genocide? Says opposition will end up helping Modi in 2024. BJP hits out at opposition Gatbandan meet in Patna. Smriti Rani calls it a selfish alliance. Says India's future is opposition's target. Prime Minister Modi attends the all-important state dinner with President Biden and First Lady Jill Biden raises a toast to India-US friendship. And after a five-day intensive hunt in the Atlantic Ocean, all five civilians on board Ocean Gate's Titanic submersible declared dead. focus on the Prime Minister's visit to America and day two particularly was a full-on power-packed agenda. Let's tell you what to expect in the hours to come. Again, through the night, the Prime Minister is going to be busy, at least Indian Standard Time. Let's tell you what's on the itinerary going forward. Well, uh, at about uh, 10 p.m. this evening, you can expect that there will be India-US high-tech handshake event. Now, this is where tech companies will be coming together. This event will happen at the White House. That will be followed by a luncheon, a State Department luncheon, where representatives, uh, all the officials who have been part of the Indian contingent, will also be a part of that particular lunch. Now, after that, there will be a series of business meetings also that will take place. Remember, we've already seen some business huddles peppered along the Prime Minister's schedule in the last few days. You can expect more of that between 2.45 to 3 45 in the morning and then the big one the community event at the ronald reagan center which will kick off at 4 a.m indian standard time the prime minister is expected to be there somewhere between 4 30 to 5 in the morning and he's going to be addressing the indian diaspora hours later prime minister narendra modi will be leaving from america after what has been deemed as a hugely successful uh, tour and a successful visit at 9 40 a.m tomorrow morning he will be departing from america not coming back home just yet He's going to be heading to Cairo in Egypt. But what's happened so far as far as the Prime Minister's America visitor is concerned? In the last 24 hours, there have been crucial, crucial takeaways uh, and developments that have happened. In case you've missed them, let's get you some of the most eye-catching moments. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is almost an hour long address to the joint session of US Congress clearly left a lasting impression. Congressmen filled the hall. Uh, in fact, there were chants of Modi, Modi, with 15 standing ovations and 79 applauses. The chants came from the galleries filled with Indian Americans. And the Prime Minister's address was also attended by the Indian diaspora, and they were seen chanting slogans throughout the Prime Minister's speech, as you can hear there. Modi, 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 Modi. 
It wasn't just, however, the Indian diaspora. They were supremely excited. Prime Minister Modi was seen signing autographs for some of the members of U.S. Congress. The senators were queuing up to get a signed copy of the Prime Minister's speech. Members of the U.S. Congress also flanked Prime Minister Modi to click a selfie with him. Uh, and the Prime Minister was seen graciously heeding to every selfie request, spending almost 15 minutes after his speech uh, heeding to every request. The iconic Empire State Building in New York was, uh, in fact, uh, lit up in the tricolor during the Prime Minister's visit. And the Empire State Building was shining bright in the colors of the Indian national flag. Let's first get you details of what played out in the U.S. Congress address. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is now the first Indian Prime Minister to have addressed the joint meeting of the U.S. Congress twice. In his hour-long address to the U.S. Congress, Prime Minister Modi touched upon various topics. He spoke about climate change. He spoke about Indian economy, the growth, the boom we've been seeing, women empowerment, terrorism. He spoke about the Indo-Pacific, the Quad's power, and amid all of that, also threw in a number of jokes that had the house in laughs. Let's get you all the details in our next report. Mr. Narendra Modi's historic second address to the U.S. Congress. The Prime Minister walked into loud cheer and applause as lawmakers welcomed him. Flanked by U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris, the Prime Minister received a rock star welcome. stood up and applauded as he walked up to the podium to deliver his address. Chants of Modi Modi from members of the Indian American lawmakers and members of the Indian diaspora reverberated the Grand House Chamber at the U.S. Capitol. Members of Congress, I have the high privilege and distinct honor of presenting to you His Excellency Narendra Modi, the Prime Minister of the Republic of India. Attack on Pakistan, Prime Minister reiterated that there can be no double standards in dealing with terror. He called on the world to act against state sponsors of terror. More than two decades after 9 11 and more than a decade after 26 11 in Mumbai, radicalism and terrorism still remain a pressing danger for the whole world. We must overcome all such forces sponsoring and exporting terror. Prime Minister Modi also referred to China amid its aggressive military maneuvering in the strategically vital Indo-Pacific region. The dark clouds of coercion and confrontation are casting their shadow in the Indo-Pacific. The stability of the region has become one of the central concerns of our partnership. We share a vision of a free, open and inclusive Indo-Pacific. So remember, Noting that the Ukraine conflict is causing great pain in the region, Modi said liberty, that this is not an era of war, equality, once again appealing for dialogue and, and diplomacy. This is not an era of war. But it is one of dialogue and diplomacy and we all must do what we can to stop the bloodshed and human suffering. Modi paid 
paid rich tribute to the Indian American community's success and cited Every Vice President Kamala miles. Harris as a glowing example. There are millions here who have roots in India. Some of them sit proudly in this chamber. And there is one behind me who Prime Minister Modi also hailed when woman power history. and said that they will lead and the world back. towards a better future. Women's sages compose many verses in these Vedas. And today, in modern India, women are leading us to a better future. Modi sang a couplet written by him to stress India's steely resolve in the global arena. Asman me sir uthakar. Asman me sir uthakar. Ghane badalo ko cheer kar. Roshni ka sankal pale. Abhi to suraj uga hai. Modi received 15 standing ovations and 79 applauses during his hour-long speech. I think more than anything, he talked about the future and the future alliance between the United States and India, how great that's going to be. Um, and it was a very moving speech. The message from the Prime Minister is very positive and very exciting to see the relationship between the United States and India. God bless America. Jai Hind. Long live. India US friendship. Thank you. Amid Modi Modi and Bharat Mata ki Jai Chant. <laughs> the Prime Minister was mobbed for selfies and autographs both by US lawmakers and Indian Americans. With Rahul Kaval and Geeta Mohan in Washington, DC, Bureau Report India Today. Let's take this across now to our foreign affairs editor, Geeta Mohan. She's joining us live from Washington, D.C. Uh, Geeta, it's been, of course, uh, a fully packed meeting uh, and visit for the prime minister, which means it's been packed for you too while covering the prime minister's different schedules. But what's expected now going forward in the hours to come? What to you is going to be the biggest highlight of the events lined up? Well, uh, a very important business engagement. There's a high-tech uh, handshake that is going to take place. Uh, no access there. Uh, there's going to be a pool spray, which means official media go, uh, will go in, uh, take photo ops, and uh, and and uh, come out. Then he has uh, some very important uh, meetings with uh, the top CEOs of the country, uh, followed by his address to, uh, to an event organized by US ISPF. Uh, that's going to be a very interesting one at the Kennedy Center, uh, where there are about 900 to 1,000 uh, uh, delegates who would be there to listen to Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the vision of an economic future for India and the United States of America. And finally, before he leaves for Cairo, Egypt, he is going to do what he does in every uh, visit of his, which is engage the Indian diaspora. That's going to happen at a place called the Ronald Reagan Center, right across his own hotel, Hotel Buller. And there, uh, like in the past, when we've had a huge... Okay, apologies. So we'll reconnect with Geeta in just a bit. She has been getting us details really of what's expected now going forward in the Prime Minister's visit, the last day of uh, his America tour and lots lined up once again. We'll continue tracking that and continue also getting you the highlights on the other side of a short break. What played out at the state dinner at the White House? That's what we'll tell you after the short break. Stay with us.
Prime Minister Narendra Modi chose traditional Hindu culture of Das Danam for an octogenarian who has witnessed 1,000 full moons as his gift concept for the US President Joe Biden. In a sandalwood box handcrafted by a master craftsman from Jaipur, 10 different objects of Das Danam were aesthetically placed. The sandalwood for the box was sourced from Mysore and had intricately carved flora and fauna patterns. For the Das Danam, Bhu Danam or land donation is an important gift. Sandalwood was offered in place of Bhutan. In fact, each item of this gift box is handcrafted from different parts of India. There was a silver idol of Ganesha, the Hindu deity considered as the destroyer of obstacles and the one who is worshipped first among all gods. It's handcrafted by a family of fifth generation silver smiths of Kolkata. A diya or oil lamp occupies a sacred space in every Hindu household. The silver diya in the box has also been handcrafted by artisans from the family of fifth generation silver smiths in Kolkata. A delicately handcrafted silver coconut by the skilled artisans of West Bengal was offered in place of a cow for Godan. Til or white sesame seeds sourced from Tamil Nadu offered for Tildan. Handcrafted in Rajasthan, this 24 karat pure and hallmarked gold coin is offered as Hiranyadan or donation of gold. Ghee or clarified butter sourced from Punjab is offered for Achyadan. A handwoven textured Tushar silk cloth sourced from Jharkhand symbolized Bastradan. Long grained rice sourced from Uttarakhand are offered for Dhanyadan or donation of food grains. As Gurdan, jaggery sourced from Maharashtra was offered. A 99.5% pure and hallmarked silver coin, aesthetically crafted by Rajasthan artisans, was offered as Ropyadan or donation of silver. Lavan or salt from Gujarat made for Lavandan or donation of salt. All these gift items were placed on the copper plate or the Tamra Patra sourced from Uttar Pradesh. A shloka has been inscribed on it. In ancient times, Tamra Patra was widely used as a medium for writing and record keeping. Other than this, the Prime Minister also gifted President Biden a copy of the first edition print of the 10 principal Upanishads published by Faber and Faber Limited of London and printed at the University Press Glasgow. It was one of the final works of W.B. Yeats. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjtag.com.
Welcome back. You're watching 6 p.m. Prime and we're getting you all the highlights of the Prime Minister's visit to America so far. In Washington, D.C., after he addressed a joint sitting of the U.S. Congress, the first couple of America, the Bidens, held an extravagant historic state dinner for Prime Minister Narendra Modi. This was at the White House. 400 dignified guests from all walks of life were invited. Interestingly, Prime Minister Modi and Biden also raised a toast with ginger ale to the successful meeting that happened between between them, they toasted to future India-US ties. And very interestingly, President Biden also cracked a joke or two about raising a toast with a non-alcoholic drink. Let's take a look at that. <laughs> It was all pomp and grand at the White House in honor of the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The USA reserves this special treatment for its closest allies. The titans of business, fashion, entertainment and more with the likes of designer Ralph Lauren, filmmaker M. Night Shyamalan rubbing shoulders with tech leaders from Apple, Google and Microsoft in a state dinner hosted by the first couple of USA where the who's who of American politics stood in attendance while India was celebrated and honored. Welcome to Prime Minister Modi's Washington home. <laughs> I've been doing it. Please have a seat. I've been doing this a long time, but I don't ever remember anybody getting a warmer welcome <laughs> than this you. man right Thank here. You. Good evening, everyone. 20 years ago, as chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, I made clear that the United States and India grew to be the closest friends and partners in the world. The world would be a safer place. I believe that even more today, now that I'm president. Special gestures के लिए आपकी मित्रता और गर्म जोशी भरे आदर सत्कार के लिए भी मैं आपका रुदाय से बहुत बहुत आभारी हूँ. But before this grand dinner, Prime Minister Narendra Modi held high-level talks with U.S. President Joe Biden at the Oval Office on not so comfortable issues like differences over human rights and India's stance on Russia's war in Ukraine. At the dinner party, bilateral ties and friendship were toasted too with no alcohol. Mr. Prime Minister, thank you for your partnership and your friendship. And to all, to all, Please join me in a toast. Mr. Prime Minister, I had an Irish grandfather named Ambrose Finnegan. And he used to say that when you give a toast and you don't have any alcohol in your glass, you must do it with your left hand. <laughs> you think I'm kidding, I'm not. Prime Minister Modi quipped with his own rejoinder. <laughs> कि आपके मेहमान मेहमान नवाजी से प्रभावित होकर कई बार आपके मेहमान गाना भी गाने लगते हैं काश मुझ में भी गाने की कला होती तो मैं भी आपको कुछ सुनाता not particularly known for his humor, but the Indian Prime Minister's comment hit home. He was referring to South Korean President Yoon Soo Kyol, who surprised guests when he got up on stage during a White House state dinner, honoring him in April, and belted out a rendition of American Pie, one of his favorite songs, to raucous applause. Something touched me deep inside the day. Wow. The music that... On Thursday, the Honorable State guest on his second state dinner at the White House praised India and USA's deepening bond as the Bidens held an extravaganza, a historic state dinner. And may we always remember that it's our people, our people, that give our partnership strength from all the backgrounds and beliefs inspire us, challenge us, tell us the truth, and push us forward. They're the reason our democracies endure, evolve, reflect, and renew 
generation after generation. जैसे जैसे समय गुजर रहा है हमारे लोगों में और एक दूसरे के प्रति समझ और बढ़ रही है एक दूसरे के नामों का सही उच्चारण कर पाते हैं एक दूसरे के एक्सेंट को समझ पाते हैं भारत में बच्चे हेलोविन पर स्पाइडरमैन बनते हैं और अमेरिका के युवा नाटू नाटू पर डांस करते हैं The 400 distinguished guests dined on a plant-based menu of millet and corn salad, portobello mushrooms and strawberry shortcake catering to the Indian Prime Minister's vegetarian taste. Toast to our partnership, to our people, to the possibilities that lie ahead, to two great friends, two great nations and two great powers. Cheers. It goes to our wonderful hosts President Biden and Dr. Jill Biden, a toast to good health, prosperity, and the pursuit of happiness, to liberty, equality, and fraternity, and to the everlasting bonds of friendship between India and the United States. Cheers. Cheers. Indian national flower the lotus was visible throughout the pavilion along with saffron hued floral arrangements that differed from table to table at the south lawn of the white house as the most powerful head of state of the world admired and showed respect to the growing most powerful head of state from asia it was an evening of dazzling brilliance of india on uncle sam's soil And that report gives you a sense of the kind of warmth that Prime Minister Modi has received from the Bidens, with President Biden even starting off his toast by saying welcome to Prime Minister Modi's Washington home. On the other side of a short break on 6 p.m. Prime, we're going to put the spotlight on a comment made by the Prime Minister that's triggered a political showdown here in India. There is a question asked to Prime Minister Modi uh, about whether democracy is dead in India. We'll tell you what his response was. In this हमने सिद्ध किया है डेमोक्रेसी कैन डिलीवर और जब मैं डिलीवर कहता हूं तब कास्ट क्रीड रिलीजन जेंडर किसी भी भेदभाव को People often donate heart and eyes but now you can also donate your skin North India's first skin bank is ready in Delhi Safdarjung Hospital eligible disease donors can donate skin and give someone a new lease of life burn victims can immensely benefit from these skin banks for their graft surgeries स्किन बैंकिंग में ये खास बात है कि इसमें कोई मैचिंग की जरूरत नहीं है कोई भी पेशेंट स्किन डोनेट कर सकता है उस मरीज की उस डिजीज की दी हुई स्किन किसी भी दूसरे मरीज में इस्तेमाल हो सकती है ना कोई ब्लड ग्रुपिंग मैचिंग चाहिए ना कोई और एच मैचिंग चाहिए और जिसमें ये स्किन हमने लगाई है उसको जीवन में कोई स्टेरॉयड और इम्यूनोसप्रेसेंट्स खाने की कोई जरूरत नहीं है Safdarjung Hospital authorities are also doing everything they can to make people aware about skin donation. With the help of specialized equipment and proven techniques, donated skin is processed and stored in bank before transplantation. इतने सारे वार्ड्स हैं जो भी नए डॉक्टर्स ज्वाइन करते हैं जूनियर रेजिडेंट्स हैं वो ज्वाइन करते हैं तो उनको सेमिनार्स लेके उनको इन्फॉर्म करके उनको बताया जाएगा डेथ फॉर्म है जब हम लोग उसको साइन करते हैं तो उसमें भी हम सोच सकते हैं कि हम उसमें भी ऐड करा दें कि हम आई डोनेशन के लिए विलिंग हैं और स्किन डोनेशन के लिए विलिंग हैं As of now there are 16 skin banks across the country and here's hoping that this latest center in Delhi opens the doors for many more such skin banks in India With Neetu Jha your report India today
Staying healthy in the summer involves knowing how to avoid sun poisoning and sunburn. Safe and healthy eating and drinking practices are included. We're telling you exactly what the most common mistakes in summers are and how you can avoid them. may be tempting to enjoy the summer months outside, it's important to not overstay your welcome in the hot summer sun. Doing so can increase the risk of sunburn, sun poisoning and skin cancer. Here are things you must keep in mind before you use a sunscreen. Adults should wear a sunscreen with no less than an SPF 15. Sunscreens should also be broad spectrum. This means they have the ability to protect against both ultraviolet A or UVA and ultraviolet B or UVB. UVA is what makes the skin age and UVB is what burns the skin. But if you do end up with a sunburn, do not use ice cubes. Sunburns can react to extreme cold. Do this instead. Putting a cold, damp towel on the skin for 10 to 15 minutes a few times each day. Applying a moisturizer with aloe vera or soy. Drinking extra water, leaving blisters alone. Sunglasses do much more than complement style during sunny days. Look for sunglasses that block out 99 to 100% of both UVA and UVB radiation. Lessen the risk of foodborne illnesses by keeping hands washed and cleaning prep surfaces and appliances. Cook and hold meats to their proper internal temperature as well. The anti-inflammatory properties of the following foods may act as a natural defense against the sun and sunburns. Berries, tomatoes, carrots, salad greens, fatty fish such as salmon, almond, green tea. The diet which is high fiber diet and which have a high water content, for example green leafy vegetables, they have a high water content. You can uh, eat watermelon in this summer, you can drink a lot of fluids like coconut water is very important. It's potassium, is a rich source of potassium. Potassium is very important for your muscles and heat cramps most of the times when happen, it is all because of potassium and sodium loss from the body. So all these uh, precautions you have to take this summer. In New Delhi, Sneha Murdani for India Today. Welcome back. You're watching 6 p.m. Prime and we're recapping for you some of the big moments of the, the Prime Minister's visit to America so far. One that's made headlines is the Prime Minister answering questions from reporters soon after the bilateral yesterday. He was asked particularly by a Wall Street Journal reporter about reported human rights concerns in India. The Prime Minister's message was clear. He said DNA, democracy runs in our DNA, democracy runs in our veins and that there's absolutely no space for discrimination. As you stand here in the East Room of the White House, where so many world leaders have made commitments to protecting democracy, what steps are you and your government willing to take to improve the rights of Muslims and other minorities in your country and to uphold free speech? Asked on India's democratic credentials and rights of Muslims, the Prime Minister made an emphatic answer at the joint briefing with President Joe Biden. Prime Minister Modi was answering to Wall Street journalist Sabrina Siddiqui. The Prime Minister's body language said it all. He removed his earpiece to make his point with full authority. What steps are you and your government willing to take to improve the rights of Muslims and other minorities in your country and to uphold free speech? discrimination <laughs> Sabka saath, sabka vikas, sabka viswas, sabka prayas, un mulbhut siddhantu ko lekar ke, aur is liye hum chalte hain. 
Prime Minister Modi made it clear that his government will not let go of India's democratic credentials at any cost. In a massive pushback to silence critics who have trained guns on India over the issue of minority rights, President Biden also rubbished claims by former U.S. President Barack Obama on India's track record in safeguarding Muslims. Publicly defending India and the Modi government, Biden repeated Modi's claim that democracy is in India's DNA. And it is in America's DNA, and I believe in India's DNA, uh, that um, the whole world, uh, the whole world has a stake in our success, both of us, and maintaining our democracies, makes us appealing partners and enables us to uh, expand democratic institutions across around the world. And uh, I uh, believe this, and I still believe this. Modi, while speaking at the U.S. Congress, made it a point to underscore his government's Sabka Saath policy to uphold minority rights. Our vision is Sabka Saath, Sabka Vikas, Sabka Viswas, Sabka Prayas. It means together for everyone's growth, with everyone's trust and everyone's efforts. This was Modi's biggest counter ever to a powerful voice which has been critical of his government. Just as Rashtrapati Biden said, India and America are in the DNA of both of them. Lok-tantr is our spirit. लोक तंत्र हमारे रगों में है। Will Modi's forceful assertions silence his detractors? With Rahul Kaval and Geeta Mohan in Washington D.C., Bureau Report, India Today. A slew of political reactions have also come in to the Prime Minister's message on democracy because soon after that particular press conference, even at the U.S. Congress, in the joint sitting that he addressed, the Prime Minister time and again spoke about how India and the United States together are democracies winning and are democracies that deliver. So that message also has resonated here in the country at a time when you've had this narrative, at least attempts uh, to set a narrative, uh, particularly by international media groups that there is uh, a violation of human rights that's repeatedly happening in India, that minorities don't have a say, that minorities don't have a voice. And the Prime Minister's message to that is very clear. He says that democracy is India, essentially. Democracy is written in our constitution, it's in our DNA, it runs in our veins. And he also started off very clearly by saying, I'm surprised to hear you say that anyone says India doesn't have a vibrant democracy. Geeta Mohan is joining us live with more details on that. Geeta, uh, you know, even if we focus on the entire controversy of what the Prime Minister said on democracy, this press conference it's really that happened, there were two questions that were raised. One on democracy, which the Prime Minister chose to respond with a three-minute long answer, essentially. That's right. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has uh, completely... Uh, shut down those who were questioning the, uh, the the record of India, credibility of the Indian administration and the Modi administration when it comes to uh, the human rights record. It is also comes at a time when there have been uh, Democrats as well as Republicans uh, who have written uh, to uh, the who wrote to the president, uh, urging the president to take up the matter of human rights with uh, with Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Uh, we do know that the national Security advisor of the United States of America said that uh, these matters are uh, discussed and exchanges take place between the two countries. Uh, very, uh, very clearly admitting that uh, there are concerns that India also raises with regards to situations in the United States of America. Uh, but having said that, uh, this also comes at a time when you look at Prime Minister Modi being accorded uh, the kind of respect that he was accorded at the uh, at, the, at the Congress, uh, to address uh, to, mm -hmm. the, uh, to the House of Representatives and the Senators and the message that was put across the standing ovation by all those, including uh, Congresswoman Jayapala, clearly shows that there is a sense in uh, in how America now is viewing the, the Modi administration. And there has been a huge 
shift in that sound is well when it comes to yeah. how the world yeah. discuss the matter. It's no longer is about what America raises, but the exchanges that the two sides have on issues on both in, in both countries. But if we were to ask that question, Geeta, of uh, what's been raised, was any mention of anything even remotely about democracy, about some of these reports suggesting that, you know, minorities are being targeted, was any of that raised in the bilateral? Uh, so what we are given to understand is that all issues, uh, when it comes to India and the United States of America, were discussed, but uh, the, the uh, conversation with regards to the situation on the ground certainly was not a paramount uh, uh, of, of, of a, uh, did not take, consume a lot of the time between, of the leaders or the delegation. Uh, the, these are matters that were taken up earlier by both sides of the concerns that both sides have. But when the formal uh, conversations took place yesterday, uh, they uh, spoke about, like they do, on exchanges with regards to what has been happening. Uh, they did go uh, quite aware into the room that there are letters that have been written to the president with regards to the human rights situation. So in that context, uh, uh, the, the issue might have come up, but uh, India uh, has very clearly stated, and it's not an explanation by the administration, but just very clearly stated that uh, that uh, the reason why democracy is thriving in uh, India is because there is voice for the sense. Uh, men in the city, not just here, back home as well, but also uh, being democratic when you allow space uh, for the sense of the popular opinion itself. Okay, all right. Geeta, thanks very much for joining us with all those details. We'll be reconnecting with you in just uh, an hour from now when you will see official engagements of the Prime Minister kicking off for day three of his visit to America. Geeta Mohan, Rahul Kaval have been keeping us ahead, getting us all those live updates from Washington. I'm slipping into a very short break. We'll continue getting you all of the highlights of the Prime Minister's visit so far on the other side. making, ma'am, of uh, what we've seen at play, a huge amount of bonhomie between the Indian Prime Minister and the American President in display, not just at the White House Oval Office, but even at the lawns of uh, the South, uh, South Lawns of the White House. Prithiji, welcome. Well, I think the gods have conspired to make sure that the visit is extremely grand and successful. As you uh, know that uh, there is an Indian belief that when something um, very auspicious is to happen, the rain gods make their presence felt. And the fact that the Indo-US relationship cannot be looked upon myopically only from a, a strategic cooperation vis-a-vis -vis defense uh, today begets a conversation around new opportunities that we have with this bilateral relationship. One in the sector of AI, another in the sector of semiconductors, then there is the sector of quantum computing and physics, then there is an opportunity in the green hydrogen mission, then you see an opportunity in biotechnology that Indian pharmaceutical companies are currently manufacturing in 14 locations around the United States of America, speaks volumes about the potential that is yet to be unleashed, that 40% of generic drug formulations in the U.S. emanate from India, again speaks about our healthcare capacities that can be leveraged for the U.S. market, that we have 200 active collaborations between Indian and U.S. labs, again cements my position vis-a-vis -vis healthcare, that a nation state which was a part of a cartoon years ago when it came to India's space mission where I still remember a legendary cartoon behind a glass door which said NASA was an Indian farmer with a cow trying to knock and find a way in to now the economist at the front page putting President Biden and India depicted as a tiger. We've come a long way. such launches are you expecting for this fiscal or could you give us a sense of the next one or two years? We've already uh, you know, talked about bringing in almost a launch every quarter 
So this is the first. We're going to see some more. Right, absolutely. So, uh, you know, with premiumization also comes the uh, the need for infrastructure upgrade at Euro Motor Corp dealership level, at the ground level as well. So what are the plans there, sir? Well, these beauties need a new house. Of course. Yeah, so we're going to open a hundred premium stores, exclusive stores for our premium products uh, over the next four quarters. So we are on that path. We're very, very excited. Our dealers are also very excited about that. Also, uh, if, I, if you're talking about, uh, you know, pre premiumization, one cannot absolutely ignore the fact that a Harley is coming up from the hero's table. Uh, so give us a sense uh, when it's coming on road and uh, how much volumes will the Extreme and the Harley's uh, X440 add? So there's going to be a lot of excitement, I can tell you that. Okay. Today we're talking about the Extreme All right. and very soon we'll be talking about other stuff as well. <laughs> right. So, uh, also my last questions, uh, you know, uh, uh, what is the focus and the plan for uh, the entry-level vehicles? Are you, is Hero simultaneously focusing on the entry-level, the 125cc segment as well, along with the 160 plus cc segment? Sure. When you think about Hero at the entry commuter side of the business, we're at about 70-80% market share and therefore getting a couple of points market share is not there's not much joy in that. What we are looking at is to grow the category, expand the category, invite more consumers as first-time buyers to come in. And we're doing a lot of work with our dealers to be able to get more customers and expand the two-wheeler category. But as the chief growth officer, are you not concerned, sir, that you know uh, the sales for rural two-wheelers is almost on a decline constantly, with electric vehicles also coming up into this space. Uh, so does that worry you or the bullish trend will continue for Hero Motor? We recently launched the Super Splendor x -Tech, which is 125cc and we are seeing across the board success okay. and uptake in rural as well as in urban. Uh, we are seeing Splendor as very strong, HF Deluxe continues to be strong. So we definitely see more and more consumers. I, just remember, we've come out of two years of COVID, so this is the time when the economy is coming back. There are lots of positive green shoots that we are seeing, and definitely it's, it, it augurs well for the two-wheeler industry. Welcome back. One of the big highlights really of the last few days of the Prime Minister being in America has been the warmth, the love from American leaders, from every American citizen also. And that essentially reaffirms how the India-US story is right on track. Let's get you all these images also of the Empire State Building in New York that was lit up in the colors of the Indian national flag. This while the Prime Minister is in America. The administration has been sending out a very clear message uh, to India that uh, America is relying on India to boost their ties going into the future. You've been seeing it in different occasions, whether it's warmth to the Prime Minister, whether it's the kind of greetings for the Indian American community, or these images of the Empire State Building. I'm leaving you with these pictures. Thanks for watching. played such an important role in uh, this visit by the Indian Prime Minister. Could you begin by giving us your sense of what you think is the biggest takeaway from Prime Minister Modi's state visit to the U.S.? Well, first of all, welcome to the United States. Uh, it was extraordinary to see uh, almost 3,000 people uh, on the White House lawn. Uh, and of course, uh, the galleries are going to be packed, as is the House. Uh, when the Prime Minister comes and addresses the United States Congress uh, later today. Uh, I believe the enthusiasm for the relationship is grounded on common interests and common values, a defense interest to make sure that China doesn't emerge as a hegemon in Asia or threaten uh, so the sovereignty of nations, a interest in solving climate uh, and solving scientific issues together, and an interest economically in partnering uh, to make sure that uh, our workers and our companies succeed.
uh, I was seeing that uh, in California, you've been facing some pushback uh, on account of the role that you've played in trying to build the India-America relationship. Do you want to talk a bit about that, uh, this criticism that's being flung uh, the way of uh, President Biden and how he's been able to you know, leave what the naysayers are saying on the side and really focus on what can be done to take the India-America relationship to the next level? Well, I have faced uh, criticism uh, for uh, helping play a role in uh, inviting the prime minister to address Congress. But I have the same philosophy as uh, President Obama, which is that you uh, talk to leaders, you talk to leaders, especially of uh, allies, uh, and no country uh, agrees with uh, everything. Of course, uh, it's important uh, to, to respect human rights, and it's important for India's own cohesion. Uh, to embrace pluralism, uh, and that is part of a conversation uh, with uh, India. But to, to have that conversation, you have to uh, engage with the leaders and respect the leaders, uh, and that is what uh, this is about. So I uh, don't think that the criticism is, uh, is justified. Welcome to WWDC. It's the biggest tech news of the year and an announcement that's got everyone talking. Apple hosted its annual WWDC event on June 5th, unveiling its much-awaited Vision Pro headset. After years of speculations, Apple has finally launched its first ever AR VR headset called the Vision Pro. This is a unique wearable device that has a bunch of cameras, speakers and sensors strapped to your face. And the weirdest, or maybe the coolest part, is that you can see right through it. Just like scuba diving goggles. Unlike Facebook's Quest, Vision Pro does not come with any controller. These headsets will be operated solely by your eyes, hands and voice. You can use it to turn your living room into a theatre of your own and with the help of the spatial audio, a mode displays that offers almost 4K resolution. The headset is powered by an M2 chip and a dedicated R1 chip. With Vision Pro, you're no longer limited by a display. Your surroundings become an infinite canvas. Use your apps anywhere and make them any size you want. With the digital crown on the top of the headsets, you can even switch from your physical environment to a virtual one. It houses a battery that offers up to two hours of playtime on a single charge. However, when plugged into power, you can use it for as long as you want. This is clearly a game-changer tech launched by Apple and as expected will burn a big, big hole in your pocket. The Vision Pro headset will be launched at $3,499 in the United States of America next year. That's roughly around 2,88,000 rupees. And if you're wondering when will it be available here in India, Apple has not yet announced when or for that matter if at all it will bring Vision Pro to the Indian market. So what else was launched at the WWDC event? The iOS 17 update for iPhones. The new update brings features like posters for phone application where you can create a contact card for each person on your contact list. A new name drop feature also now allows users to swap contact information by bringing two iPhones together and sharing the contact cards. Apple has also introduced live voicemails that you can have a glance at in case you're busy. It will also give you an ability to send a voicemail with FaceTime. Our next release iOS 17 delivers more expressive communication, simplified sharing, more intelligent input, and all new experiences for your iPhone. Balwani me chot lagna singar hai, to wo singar to sabhi ko pehna padta hai. जैसे उठाया गया था तो वो बहुत देखने में भी बहुत गंदा लग रहा था
कहते हैं वो गलत तरीके से छूटते हैं उनकी निगाह गलत होती है अगर ऐसा होता तो कुछ तो फील हुआ होता हम लोगो को ऐसा कभी नहीं लगा पता नहीं क्या बेचती होगी क्या तीसरे माँ बाप के भय नेताजी को लोग तो थोड़े बनाए हैं नेताजी को जनता चुन के भेजी है ब्रज भूषण का काम पॉलिटिक्स का ही है वो 